Hey guys, Dave from WP Smackdown here. And today I want to walk through the new 2016 WordPress theme developed by WordPress themselves. This theme is the default theme that comes shipped with WordPress 4.4, which just came out on December 8th of this year. And this will be the default theme that gets installed for all new users who are installing WordPress 4.4, but it's also available to anybody else who would like to use it on their blog. I will say that this theme is very simple. It's very clean. It does not come with a ton of other bells and whistles. It doesn't have any kind of layout builders or anything like that. So it is more geared towards those that are heavily focused on just publishing content. It would be great for a personal blog, uh, potentially, potentially even a business blog, if you have one for your company. But I think this is um, heavily geared towards content. It is not a fully featured, multi-purpose, do everything kind of theme. The default themes that WordPress puts out are never that way. There are a lot of things under the hood that you can look at how this theme was developed and you can learn uh, a lot about theme development from it. So if you're just getting started with theme development, I highly encourage you to just download the theme, check it out, see what it can do and look at the code because I think you'll learn a lot about best practices for how to build your own WordPress theme from this one. So let's dive in and take a look at the different features and uh, the design elements of the 2016 theme. It is 100% responsive, so it looks great on mobile devices and everything all the way in between, all the way up to large desktop monitors. It does have a two column layout. The second column on the right hand side, it will always be on the right, there's no option to move it around but it is optional, so you can choose to not add any widgets to the right sidebar, and then it will simply just not show up, and you'll have just one column with all of your content in it. 2016 uh, features two different fonts, uh, Merriweather and Montserrat. They're both free fonts that are available at Google Fonts. Merriweather comes in four different weights. There is a light, a normal, a bold, and an ultra bold. So that gives you some flexibility when you're styling your content or if you wanted to create a child theme and do some different things with different font weights, you've got a little bit of flexibility with Merriweather. Merriweather is used for the main body content, so everything that you see here in the very middle, all of your main content is going to be displayed in Merriweather. That's a serif font. Montserrat is used for most of your headlines, your widget titles over here, it's also used in the navigation and some of your meta information uh, that complements the post here. That uses the Montserrat font. Starting at the top, taking a look at the different elements of the theme, you've got your navigation up here at the top. There are two navigation areas. I'll get to the second one in a second, but this is your first menu option here at the top, and it does support drop downs, as you can see right here. It will support at least one more level, so I've tested the drop-downs up to three levels, and you can um, add more child navigation pages underneath parents. And the if you add a third level of navigation here, it will show up to the side of each of these as you hover over them. So it does support that. And I want to briefly show you what this looks like on a mobile device because it does look different. So everything gets collapsed under this menu button, when you tap it, it toggles open, and you'll see your navigation here. And it still, as well, supports drop-downs. And it does so in with a large clickable arrow right here. You can easily tap that on a mobile phone, and it'll open up your child elements underneath. The second navigation uh, menu that you can add to this theme will appear by default down in the footer, and it is for your social links. So here I've added Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. One of the cool things with 2016 is that you don't have to upload any icons in order for these icons to appear. It's smart enough to know that when you enter in a Facebook URL, it knows that that's facebook.com, and so it grabs a Facebook icon for you. So it'll take care of that um, automatically. You'll also notice while I'm down here at the bottom, on all of your archive pages, or your home page if you're just sh showing your latest articles. Here is what the navigation will look like to jump from page to page. 
So if you're showing 10 articles on each archive page, once you need to go to that 11th page, you can do so with the numbered pagination here or with the arrows to jump to next and previous pages. Let's take a look at the main content area. So here you have uh, a featured post that I've made sticky. So it's automatically going to show up at the top and it does put a nice little featured label above it. This right here is your post title. Underneath that you have your post excerpt. Now I really like this about the 2016 theme. Not a lot of themes do this. And so if you enter in a post excerpt, which is optional, but if you choose to add one, it gives you a little bit more of some context to set up your post instead of this excerpt right here just being the first paragraph down here in your content area. It gives you this nice little call out section to use the excerpt in, in a nice way. So I do like that feature that it will display the excerpt of the post if you enter one. Moving down you have your featured image. 2016, is, 2016 has chosen to do a small square thumbnail a lot of themes now are choosing huge images, um, but, but 2016 is going much smaller and focusing again heavily on the content. They don't want to distract the user with a huge image or create some more vertical scrolling to get to the content. They keep things pretty compact and succinct with a small thumbnail image. Right underneath that here, staying in the left gutter area, there's all of your meta information. So you've got your categories, here's your tag, your comments if there are some and an edit link will show up for those that are editors and can have the permissions to edit the post. And then of course your main content area right here in the center. I'm going to go ahead and just scroll through this briefly and show you guys that these are what your headings look like. I believe that's an H2. Your H3s here are a little bit smaller. You'll see some bulleted lists in here as well as some bolded content. Here's what your basic links look like. The text decoration, the underline disappears when you hover. Here's an example of what uh, quoted text looks like in a block quote. I believe these are H4 tags here, so they're all capitalized, looks slightly different. And that's the main content area. So now I'm going to go and show you at the bottom of the content area. Let's take a look at the comments section. Like the content itself, it's very clean, very simple, it doesn't have anything extra that it doesn't need to. WordPress has chosen to reiterate the post title here, so you have four thoughts on, and then this will display whatever the title of that post is. You've got the name of your commenter. This will link to their website URL if they've added one. You've got their avatar that shows up, and the date and time of the comment. And again, this edit link is also just for those who have permissions to edit comments. And you'll see their comment. It does support threaded comments, so you can reply to someone's comment, and then you will show up slightly indented. There's some extra space there on the left, and you get indented to the right a little bit when you reply to a comment. So 2016 does support threaded comments. Your comment form is very basic. You'll have your comment box here, followed by the name, the URL, and the email address underneath that if you're not logged in. Since I'm logged in here as an admin, all I see is the comment box. And you've got your post comment button here. I really like what 2016's done with the previous and next links. I like how they've stacked them on top of each other. A lot of themes choose to try to put a previous link off to the left and then the next link over to the right hand side on bigger screens. But I think nowadays most people's titles are long enough that they need a full line to fit anyway. So I like that WordPress kind of assumed that and since most titles are longer they're going ahead and just stacking them even on bigger screens. And they're not putting other images in here, they're just using the post title for your previous and next links. So I like what they did with that. Here you'll see the other two sidebars. So there are three sidebars total that you can add widgets to in this theme. The one is the main right sidebar that will appear on every page if you choose to use that. 
The other two are here at the very bottom of the page, right before the footer area. Um, I've chosen to just add calendar and a Twitter feed to these two sidebar areas. On larger screens, they show up next to each other, but on smaller screens, they get stacked one on top of the other. So you'll have your calendar first, and then you'll have your Twitter feed after that. And here's your footer. You can obviously create a child theme, and you can customize the footer content here, but it's just simply a link to WordPress and a link back to your homepage. And over here on the right, we've already mentioned that these are uh, links to your social pages. I'm going to go ahead and show you one more time here what this looks like on mobile so we can go through all the content. There's a few things to point out with the mobile version that I think WordPress has done a nice job with in the design of this theme. Under the menu, you'll notice that your social links get moved up here to the top within this top menu, which I think is a nice feature. That way you don't have to scroll all the way to the bottom to see that you are on social networks and you're active and you want people to go check you out there. That gets put here at the bottom of your main navigation at the top, in the, the top navigation area. So I think that's a nice feature that, that they added there as they move these links up. You'll also notice that your meta information, your categories, your tags, your link to your comments, and your author, those are missing from the top area here on smaller screens. And I like that decision again as well because I think that you're more interested in the content itself than you are how it's categorized, how it's tagged, who the author was. Those things might become more relevant once you're finished the article. And WordPress has just moved all that information to the very end of the article. So I like what they did with that. All of your main post content is going to look just like it did on desktop, obviously just slightly smaller. Here's the meta information I was talking about, your categories, your tags, your date, um, as well as the link to the author's page to read more from that author. Your comments also look almost identical to how they did on desktop. No real big changes there. And you'll notice it still supports threaded comments and there is still some indentation here for when you reply to someone's comment. Here you'll notice the calendar widget is on top of the Twitter widget, so these guys are stacked on top of each other. Here's my right sidebar. It gets moved underneath the content on smaller screens, but otherwise it's displayed just the same as it is on larger screens. And the other thing I like about this mobile, uh, the mobile version on smaller screens is that they've added the navigation at the bottom as well. And it's not hidden behind any kind of toggle, so it just displays there by default. And I like that because if you've read a really long article, you get to the bottom of the page, you might want to navigate elsewhere. Instead of scrolling all the way to the top, which could be a little time consuming or a little bit annoying, you've got all of your links right here, both your social links as well as your main navigation links that support drop down uh, right here at the bottom after you're finished reading that post. So I like what they did there. The last thing I'll run through is just the customization options. There aren't many, so it won't take long. Uh, again, 2016 and all the WordPress default themes do not come packaged with a ton of different bells and whistles, but there are a few things that you can tweak on your own using the customizer. The main three areas that you can customize is you can add a, a custom header image, you can add a background image, and you can change the colors. So let's take a look at the colors. It does come pre-packaged with four defaults. Um, five defaults actually. You've got your main just black and white default color scheme. You've got a darker one, a gray one, there's red, and here's what the yellow looks like. So those are your color schemes that come shipped with the theme, but you can also change to any color you want, and you can change a couple of different areas. So you'll see here are the five main colors that you have the option to change. Your background color is around the outside. Your page background color is going to be everything inside of this container. So if I make it slightly darker, I make it a, a light gray, you'll see that change there. You can change the color of all your links. Let's say I wanted the links to be more of a purple color. You can do that and you'll see those change here. Your main text, that's going to be all of your main content area. We're just going to leave that to be a darker color. And then your secondary text color, 
That's a little bit tough to read. Let's go with blue. So you'll notice it, it changes the excerpt, changes this meta information, these links over here change. You'll also notice that your block quotes are going to change to that secondary text color. And all of the links in your content area, when you hover over them, that's going to use the secondary text color as well. So pretty basic color options, but it does give you the option to customize things a little bit. If you add a custom header image, you can upload any image you'd like. I've got one already selected here, so I'm just going to show you what that looks like once you've added that to your theme. It'll show up right here at the top underneath your site title and your main navigation, and it will link back to your home page when you click on it. And if you wanted to add a custom background image as well, there's not a ton of area for it to show up because you only have sort of this, what looks almost like a border, but this is where the background image will display uh, in that orange area that you're seeing right now. So let's say I chose these water droplets. You'll see what that looks like here, displayed in the background. And you can choose to repeat that image. Let's say you have a really small image that's a pattern. You could add that. You'd want to choose your tile option, and that would tile it and repeat it across the entire background. Um, and then you can keep the background fixed as I go to scroll down my page, or you can have the background scroll with you. And those are your three customization options for 2016. So I hope you like this walkthrough. If uh, you have any questions about it, I'd be happy to answer them. Or if you're using 2016 on your website, I would love to know what you think. So please leave me a comment. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.